Hello, my name is Matt McDonald. I'm the creator of Axis Game Factory. I'd like to make a demo here for you on how to use the new DLC we came out with, the Zombie FPS Player. So we're going to start a new project from scratch, and I'm taking you through all the steps that are necessary to create a zombie first-person shooter using the new building assets and the new zombie assets that come with the DLC. We're going to go to New Project. Going to name our project. We'll call this Demo Zombies. Create. And then we'll call this Scene 01. Now the new DLCs have scene linking in them, so you want to keep your nomenclature alphabetical. So I'm going to do scene 01, 02, 03, and so on, and the scenes will automatically connect to one another. I'm going to use this simple gray background here. Set this to 1600 by 900. We're going to right mouse click. We're going to go to the grid editor. I'm holding down the space bar. Bring up the grid editor. I'm going to open up these here. We want to set the guidelines for the uh, zombie building structures. We want to set this to 10. And we want to set the subdivisions at 1. That's about that. And now I'm going to load my zombie building assets. I'm clicking, clicked on the Manage Assets button here. Going to click on the Warehouse. Going to go to Building Assets 01. Hit the Add button. Now it's adding the building assets for the zombie player. Now these building assets can be used with any level. They don't have to be used with the zombie player, but only the zombie player currently recognizes the door system that we have built in there. Hit the drop down here, go to building assets, and I'm going to first build my entry point. So I click on entry 01, that's pretty simple. You can see the object as I bring it out to the workspace. It pushes the camera back so I'm, I'm seeing the object properly. And you can see the object sliding around on the grid. There's, it's not snapping to the grid. Now in order for things to snap to the grid properly, you want to set your grid size and you also want to toggle the grid on. So you hit the Z button or Z button on the keyboard and then that toggles the grid. You can see how it's now snapping to the grid. Now it's not snapping to the corners, it's not snapping to the sides, it snaps to the anchor and this particular anchor point is centered within that object's mass. Now I can hit the Z button again and you can see now it's it's actually snapping to the subdivisions. Where these two yellow lines intersect, that's the uh, 0, 0, 0 in the world coordinates. So that's the very center of the world. And we know that also if we get off track we can hit the home button and it takes us right back to the center. So I'm going to make this just slightly off center. Click that there and you see how that snaps out. Open up my warehouse here again and we're going to snap in some offices. You can see the door there on one side. I'm going to hold down the control button and tap the space bar and hold down the shift button as well simultaneously and by rolling the middle mouse button I can roll that object while it's on my tooltip. Now holding down the shift it'll roll it in 45 degree increments. So I'm going to click that out there. Now those of you that are on Macs the control and shift combination doesn't work in that fashion, so we took care of you by putting in the brackets, keys. All these keystrokes, by the way, are in the GUI themselves. There, I'll right mouse click and go to controls, and you can see object adjustment, and you can see here rotate 90 degrees, it's the left bracket, and rotate 90 degrees, the right bracket. We'll go ahead and drop these over here in the dock so we can see them. And hit the bracket key and it rotates that object 90 degrees. By rolling your mouse button, you can change which asset's actually going to be used. So you can see as I roll my mouse button around, it's changing assets on my tooltip. So I don't want to have windows there maybe, so I can click that one out. I'm going to click this one there. These polygons intersecting, that's intentional, that's fine, because we're going to put the roof on it anyways. In the chance that you want to use one of these objects by themselves, you want that piece of architecture sticking out in that fashion so that's that's why it's there in that way. But I'm trying to cut down the amount of objects that are necessary in order to build the most things. Now I'm going to hold down that control and shift again and roll my mouse button. I'm going to pl place that there. And that one has the, wind the glass in the front so that's a corner unit. And now we're going to roll it this way and that has the windows in the back. I don't need that one. We're going to use this one here. And now once I've placed an object 
at one location, I place the second object, that creates a, an offset. By hitting the G button on the keyboard, it'll repeat that last, that last uh, offset. So now I'm going to cap this off, and what I'll do here is use this uh, piece in that fashion. And now what we want to do is fill in the hallways. In order to do that, we grab these little floor sections, and they're literally named floor one, two, three, four. Put that there, that there, that there. But you also need to load the other zombie asset pack, and it's literally called Zombie FPS 01. We got a special start locator and end locator. So I mentioned earlier that we have uh, scene linking. So based on the the arrow's location, that's the way that the camera's going to be placed at the start of the game. So when the game starts, you're going to be looking at those front doors there. Now, the end locator was intentionally set up so that the players can see the end location. So they think that way they can choose to either go to the next level or stay in the current level. So this actually shows up in the game in that fashion. That's why I made it bigger and that's why I put the big words finish on it. Now we can uh, grab some health pickups here. And um, I was showing this to my sons the other day. They didn't realize it was there. But as you float an object over the wall, you can hold down the N button and it'll auto automatically align that object to the normal. So you don't have to worry about lining things up. You can see as I rotate around this, this beam here or any around this, that it actually just finds itself to align. So we'll just put some health on the side here. And we can do a similar thing with the weapons, I believe. Let's go to the weapons and grab a AK-47. And I'm going to hold down the end button. And you can see just by holding down the end button, it snaps it right to the wall automatically. What you have to do is hold down that end button, and it snaps right into place. We'll put a weapon there. And we'll grab this uh, MP5, hold down N. Then just hold down Control and then roll it, holding down control and N at the same time there. I clicked it right out there. So that's enough weapons to get us started. I'm going to go back to interactive objects, get, grab some of these barrels. This is a corrosive barrel. When it's shot, it will explode with corrosive fluid and hurt your character as well as the zombies. This one's flammable and basic. It explodes, sets things on fire. This one's radioactive, similar damage. And this one's poisonous. I think what I'm going to do is turn this blue one into water instead of another poisonous. So that way, if you catch yourself on fire, you could blow up a water tank and put yourself out. And for placing the zombies, all you do is select the zombie, and it's, I set it up just like a toy set. Um, just rotate the character. It's got a little base on it, just like you'd see in a, in a game, game piece. And that's the spawner for the zombie. Um, that's it all the AIs built into it. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and save this. So in order to play it to an external play, you need to save the scene first. And then this, this scene is actually passed from the editor to the player. Save the scene.